Trudeau's new Senate picks and won with the questionable past. I'm Brian Lilly with the Rebel.media. Six new senators appointed from Ontario, all handpicked by Justin Trudeau. He calls them nonpartisan. Again, I'm sure that we'll find out some of them very much are. But the one that many people are focusing in on is the first woman to ever head the Ontario Provincial Police. I'm talking about Gwen Boniface, and her appointment is being heralded because she was someone that helped break the glass ceiling. But that's not what I remember Gwen Boniface for. This is the woman who was in charge of the OPP from 1998 until the middle of 2006. And it was on her watch that Caledonia started to happen. The standoff at Caledonia and the OPP were the lead police force on this. Well, why do I bring this up? because it was on Boniface's watch that the OPP instituted a two-tiered policing system. There was one set of rules for native protesters and one for residents of the town. Uh, there were confrontations back then, if you remember uh, the, the way that the, the whole standoff took off. There were violent protests, there were scuffles with police, there were cameramen that had their, their equipment taken from them. All of it with OPP officers watching and they did nothing if the perpetrator was native. Why? It was all because of the philosophy brought about by Gwen Boniface. Now, much of this is detailed in Christy Blatchford's book, Helpless. This isn't a book that you should read unless you want to get angry at how the legal system, the justice system, the police and politicians left an entire town helpless when a few protesters decided to march from their reserve onto a housing estate that was being built in Caledonia, Ontario, a small town southwest of Hamilton, then there was a, a standoff that lasted for years. There's still two-tier policing going on, and it has been called out by the police or by the courts just recently. In fact, a man was awarded three hundred thousand dollars for the way that the OPP treated him compared to native protesters. Three hundred thousand dollars. Why? They tried to run him off the road. They tackled him. They injured him. All the while, allowing native protesters to do whatever they wanted without arrest. Now. Julian Fantino took over from Gwen Boniface, and most of the problems happened under his watch. But it was all a policy started under Boniface's watch. She was part of the, the group that was trying to deal with the Ipperwash Commission that looked at the, the killing of Dudley George and wanted to make amends for it. What did they do? They went too far in the other direction. And they tried to make amends by punishing the people of Caledonia, by showing them that it didn't matter that they were Canadian citizens on Canadian soil, the law would be applied to them differently than it was to the people causing the ruckus. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what I will remember Gwen Boniface for. Sadly, not that many Canadians care, as we witnessed by the fact that Julian Fantino was elected to Parliament several times, sat in Stephen Harper's cabinet. I dogged him about the issue of Caledonia for some time. Eventually gave up because people just didn't want to talk about it. They're afraid to talk about it, I think, because it involves race issues. But I'm sorry, we cannot have a race-based justice system in this country. Justice is supposed to be blind. It shouldn't matter whether you're rich or poor, tall or short, what race you are. Justice should be applied in the same manner. And because of Gwen Boniface and her decisions, it wasn't in Caledonia. Welcome to the Senate, Senator. Welcome to the Senate, Ms. Boniface. But shame on you for your past actions. Maybe now you can try and make amends. But I won't hold my breath. If you like what you just watched, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Just click down here below or head on over to the Rebel and become a member. Then you can access premium content you won't get anywhere else.